Hi guys, it's a gray morning here in San Gio Croix de Vie, but I'm headed to the beach anyway because I wanted to show you what it's like to dine in a traditional creperie. And the best way to get to the beach is via the Passeur, a little boat that takes you right across the channel. Let's go. Looks like we made it just in time. People are already queuing up to get on the boat. All aboard. There isn't really a set schedule. It comes every five to 10 minutes or so, but it does only run during the months of July and August. Pay the man the fare and it's two euros going in front. <laughs> and we're off. The port of Saint Gilles still functions as a fishing port, so it's fun to see all of the fishing boats coming in and out with their daily catch. Now you also can ride bikes to the beach or you can drive, but right now we are in high season. It's so hard to drive and park the car. So the best thing to do is to walk from town, get the passeur, cross, and walk to the beach. The funny thing is, it's probably the shortest boat ride you'll ever take. Once you leave the harbor, you basically cross the channel to the other side and you're there. <laughs> but it's certainly quicker than walking all the way around. Then once you get off, it's a scenic walk to the beach. You basically just cross the bridge and that will take you to a little dirt path. And you'll find another path that heads to the beach. So we have a group of people today. We've got the family, we got Orly. <laughs> this is what's happening in the month of July. We start to have a lot of friends and family that come to visit and we have a real international group today. So with us, we have Susanna. <laughs> Originally from Argentina, but lives in Los Angeles. <laughs> And then we have Diego. I'm Diego, originally from Argentina, and I live in Barcelona. Okay, and then we've got Mavi. From Venezuela. Venezuela. And, Venezuela. <laughs> and then we've got Philippe. Yes, originally from Canada, but now in Geneva. Aha! <laughs> and then we've got my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, and my daughter, Orly. So off we go, and they are here from France. And to eat at a crepery when you have a lot of people is really the way to go because it's inexpensive, everybody gets what they want, and it's pretty quick. This is another fun thing about being in France in the summer is that we get to reunite with friends who are in Europe where it's just a quick trip over to France to come see us. Then you take a nice little walk through the forest <laughs> up to the beach. It's so beautiful and peaceful here, and it's one of the things that I really love about this region of France is all the natural beauty. It's so pretty. Ta-da! We made it to the beach. Even though it's a gray day, it's still a beautiful place to come. This boardwalk is known as the Remblay, and this is where you can find all different kinds of great restaurants focusing on local food and seafood, and each table has an amazing view of the ocean. On a sunny day, further down the Remblay is the perfect opportunity to take advantage of all of the awesome water activities. You'll see lots of surfing, windsurfing, paddle boarding, you name it, it's all here. And the creperie we're eating at today is called Les Cabines. It's owned by a charming French couple, Amandine and Francois. Amandine takes care of the front of the house while Francois is in the kitchen. Francois is from the Brittany region of France, which is where galettes and crepes originated from. He decided to bring the tradition here to saint gilles croix de vie which is in the Vendée region. Most creperies in France will serve both galettes and crepes. The galette is the savory variety, where the crepe is the sweet one. It's best to leave room for both because they're equally delicious. Okay, now it's really traditional to drink cider with galettes. And you can see the guys here, normally the cider will come in a big pitcher. Diego, show us your cider. There you go. Now cider is traditionally served in bowls. And I had to laugh because Susanna was asking me, well, does it come hot? <laughs> because it's in this little bowl with the handle. It doesn't come hot, but it was an excellent question. So I wanted to know why the cider is served in a bowl. And this nice gentleman is gonna tell me why. <laughs> So he explained that long ago, cider was served in these little mugs or pottery because glass is a relatively new invention. And you would use these mugs for just about anything you would drink. The funny thing is, is that the tradition of the cider and the bowl just sort of stuck together and we still serve it this way even today. In France, oftentimes restaurants will serve what's known as a, a mousse bouche, which is a complimentary little snack that's served while you wait for your meal to arrive. And right now, Susanna is trying the galette with butter. So good. Is it good? So good. Amazing. <laughs> Galettes are made with a very earthy flour called blé noir, which is very similar to our buckwheat flour that we get in the States. If you want to learn how to make them, I have a recipe on this channel that will show you how. But you can see how he's folding them into a square. That's the traditional way to fold a galette, and you can usually tell that it's something savory when you see it folded that way. And then, of course, the finishing touch is always a little bit of melted butter. <laughs> it's so good. 
What I love about Francois' style is that he makes the classics, but he also makes some really gourmet looking galettes. This one was the galette of the season. Ham, pesto, and a little bit of melon sorbet. Susanna, that looks amazing. <laughs> so good. Susanna got an open-faced vegetarian galette, and I was very happy with my choice, too. It is a galette with good, right? potatoes, cheese, caramelized onions, and very local good. ham from Vendée. And then you also get a cute little salad on the side. All right, well, I'm going to give it a try. Let's see. This does look pretty amazing. The caramelized onions looks... This is certainly hearty. <laughs> I have to pace myself because I definitely want to save room for dessert. Did you get Lady? A galette. A galette? Usually in France, the galettes for kids are just ham and cheese, right? That's a popular choice. What do you think? Oh. And Bruno? Qu'est-ce que tu as pris, Bruno? Une galette bretonne avec de l'émental, de la saucisse fumée, de l'andouillette de guéméné et oh. de sauce au cidre. Oh, mmh. sauce du cidre. Okay, bon appétit. Merci. And for dessert, I had to save room for the crepe of the season, a strawberry crepe. Francois was sweet enough to invite me into his kitchen to see if I could make the crepe on one of his fancy griddles. He told me that sometimes he's got all five of these griddles going at once. This is amazing. Okay, here's the thing. You got to take it with your left hand and then spin it with your right hand. This, I think, is going to be... Okay. I see. Just une louche. Oui, une louche. Une louche. Okay, here we go. Oh, my gosh. All right. Voilà. Et je prends ça. Voilà. Et rapidement, maintenant. Oui, voilà. On y va. Voilà. Okay. Voilà. Ça, c'est bon. Voilà. This is hard! <laughs> oh my god, c'est difficile! Oh la la! This is une catastrophe! C'est pas mal, pour une première. Well, then you know he's a sweet guy with that kind of encouragement. Then he came over to show me how to actually fold them. So the crepes are typically folded in a triangle. So he does the first two corners and then he flips up the bottom. His looks perfect, right? <laughs> Wait till you see mine. Then of course he goes in with a little bit more of the melted butter. And then it was my turn. Okay. There we go. Okay, things are looking My good. crepe was a bit of a floppy mess, burnt on the outside and undercooked on the inside. <laughs> I was amazed at how hot those griddles were. It was really hard to control the heat. They're much easier to make, I think, in a pan at home. Okay, I think I'm going to keep my day job. <laughs> <laughs> However, he did take his fabulous looking crepe and put the rhubarb ice cream and strawberries on it, added some of that delicious strawberry sauce, and then of course proceeded over to the whipped cream machine <laughs> for the final flourish. I mean, look at that machine. Wouldn't you love to have that at home? <laughs> How easy is that? And then the finishing touch was some of their delicious homemade crumble that he put all over the top of this crepe. I mean, was this like the most fantastic looking thing? Oh my gosh, with the crumble, how good does this look? And a little bit of the rhubarb ice cream. Let's see. That's amazing. So good. Well, that was super fun and so delicious. Again, I think I'll keep to the videos and not be a professional crepe maker. <laughs> I don't think I've got that in my future. If you guys come to saint Gilles, you definitely have to check out the creperie. And Amandine and Francois could not be more gracious and hospitable. Oh, and I think the sun is coming out. Yay! Time to head to the beach.